a lot of issues fundamental investors have with a quants approach to managing risk is this idea that you don't know what you don't know. And what happens when an extreme event comes that you never forecasted? What happens when that comes and topples all your positions? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I wouldn't say that it's not you don't know what you don't know. It's like you choose to ignore what you choose to ignore. And having worked, especially at the company that I was previous at, like we were privy to a lot of these very large events. Like the company that I worked at sort of did the math to figure out that Bernie Madoff was a, was a fraud. The collapse of Credit Suisse, we were like, hey, we had this for you right here. And so the tools are available. It's just whether or not, you know, risk managers are allowed to implement them. And so like when you say you don't know what you don't know, I think a lot of it is people putting their head in the sand uh, and choosing to ignore the fact that you're making this exception to lend out this incredible amount of money just because, you know, they're a friend or something. And so, you know, there are approaches to you know, making sure these things don't happen. I know this is like something that's, you know, well-documented and is nothing new, but it's like returns aren't normally distributed. Don't make an assumption that returns are normally distributed. And then I don't even want to get into this, but you have all sorts of issues with VAR calculations. Like these big banks should not be using VAR calculations. Um, they're like inherently flawed. Certain regulations require that you report on VAR. Everyone has to do it. And they're like, well, maybe this is good enough. But for the most part, it's not good enough. And, you know, you should be taking more care in you know, looking at your positions. And, you know, I think the argument for taking more of a quantitative and statistical approach is that you can find relationships that you can find relationships and correlations that you might not be able to using sort of a more fundamental approach. Tell me a little bit about how your last company determined that Bernie Madoff was a fraud. Interesting story. So Harry Markle uh, worked across the street and he came over and he's just like, guys, this doesn't make any sense. Like, uh, you know, there's this manager, let's call him manager B, and we run the exact same strategy. I can't find any big discernible difference between what we're doing and what they're doing. But this other manager just never loses money. And so like sat down and our, the former CEO, the CEO of my former company, you know, spent a few hours analyzing returns and things like this. And he's like, there's several possibilities here. One, they're running just a completely different strategy than what they're telling investors, which, you know, would be bad, but not the end of the world. Two, this is possible that they are beating the market roughly with the same strategy. The odds of that are about one in 22 million. And then third, they're just making up the returns and thought nothing, the, our CEO thought nothing, nothing of it. Harry goes away like 15 years later, comes back into the office and he's like, finally got him. And, uh, yeah, it turned out to be Bernie Madoff. So that was a that was an interesting day in the office for sure. You so you started interning in the in the you know in your at your last company in 06. So you were there in the office when that happened, right? Yes, I was. It was quite a it was quite a day. He like Harry like ran into our office, like grabbed a bottle of whiskey, and then uh, the reporters were all at, all at the door. Wow, what was two thousand and eight like from a Quant, particularly in risk management. And I ask that question because obviously it was Quants who bundled up all these different products um, to sell, which were obviously trash. What was it like? Yeah, so it was interesting. And of course, like kind of going back to the point of like, you're going to ignore what you want to ignore. And interestingly enough, we had built a probability of default and a loss given default model using. Alexandria's sentiment data. And you could, it was like, it was, it was silly how easily it was to forecast that these companies were going to default. And so like we were using this new sentiment data along with our risk data, again, to like for, forecast probabilities of default. And like, you could just see 
like the financial services companies were skyrocketing prior to the crash happening. And so, yeah, it's like the signs were there if you wanted to listen. It's easier to look in retrospect and say, oh, shoot, you should have done that. But, you know, it's, it certainly was, was an interesting time, especially when people are like, we really need to up our game with our risk systems. And, you know, everyone panicked about that for a while and then some did, but a lot didn't, unfortunately. 